Hey all, and welcome back for another Hell Firecom's Patreon Quick Look. Today, we are going to be checking out Bravely Default for the Nintendo 3DS. This was commissioned by Lokivex, and we're just going to go ahead and start a new game here. In case you're wondering what the previous file was, that was our first attempt at a Quick Look, which I had not configured my 3DS capture software in a while, so it recorded just my in no you know mic audio and whatnot oh was my face red at the time and i was seething oh yes i was you know what the music is so important and so good for this that we needed to redo it because ooh ooh this game's got a good soundtrack now i played the demo of this when it came out and i found it to be a little bit overwhelming because yeah, we'll get into it, but there's a brave system and a default system, and you'll see what we're on about when we get into it. But it's both like a traditional RPG, and a little bit of a fresh take on it as well. So, honestly, in my opinion, the start of the game does better to sell the game as a whole than the actual demo, which, you know, is the purpose of a demo, is to sell you the game. Yeah, the demo threw you in in a way where it kind of started you off with, I think, your full party and you can pick your jobs and you can go in and, yeah, it was like it was a lot compared to this where, you know, it slowly teaches you it, you get the full tutorials, it's not as good for, you know, uh, if you want to get into the action, but it is better if you're learning. Also, I get ready for the camera to see your room! Nope, you ain't seeing shit, mate. So, yeah, there is a there's a bit of an opening where you place down your AR marker card and, uh, you know, the one that came with your 3DS, and it does a thing with the fairy coming up and telling you the story. It's a cute little thing where they, you know, when this game was being made, they said, we're going to use everything that the 3DS has to offer, you know, to make it so that we're taking full advantage of the system. You got 3D visuals, you got play coins, you got uh, street pass, you got very short skirts, yep. you got everything that, that a good game has on the 3DS. So what's the deal with the art style for this? Because it reminds me a little bit of Final Fantasy Tactics. So the artist for this game um, is one who I think I think it is the same guy who worked on Tactics. So this is definitely a a side Final Fantasy series. <laughs> yeah. Literally, this game is the successor to a game that was on the DS called Final Fantasy for Warriors of Light, oh. which in Japan was literally called Final Fantasy Gaiden or Side Story for Warriors of Light. Um, so instead of making a sequel to that, they said, hey, why don't we just, instead of making like a little Final Fantasy clone, why don't we make like our own sort of sub-series? And so that evolved into Bravely Default. Hmm. For all intents and purposes, this game is Final Fantasy V-2 in everything but story. Uh, it uses Phoenix Downs, Fire Raga, ah. there's even Chocobos and Moogles. I know what they are. It's basically a Final Fantasy, uh, with the exception of the name. Mm. I think the only other like, Final Fantasy F spin-off I've played in recent years is World of Final Fantasy, which I never got around to completing, honestly. That's a good one. That's actually one of the better ones. So, And it's, it's a, you know, a, a walk down memory lane with a lot of the characters, so you get them all there. Sora was a summon in the PS4 version, I believe. Not sure if he's available anymore. Uh, he was DLC that was limited time, so yeah, he might be gone now. Multiple characters for our journey, perhaps? Yes, this dapper fellow here, Ring a Bell, voiced by uh, Spike Spencer, aka the uh, the guy who did Shinji in the original Evangelion. Ah, okay. Meanwhile, in the Ice Palace or Mansion for Twilight Princess. We get uh, probably the most fan favorite character out of all the playable ones here, Idea Lee. Not sure I can see why just yet. Uh, it's more her personality. A lot of people like it, and we won't get to her in this. But uh, she has she has a fun personality. Plus, she's voiced by uh, Cassandra Lee Morris, aka uh, Morgana. Lucky good Joker. Vestal of wind has been sighted there. For your father, and for your country. You must apprehend her at all costs. And your quiff, that's also very important. He has a Moogle's head bubble on his thing. 
this is your finest blend. So it's interesting, in these CGI scenes, you know, they're a bit more uh, humanly proportioned. And then you get to the game and you realize, boy, that is not the art style. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's like suddenly playing Final Fantasy IV DS, you know? Yeah, um, the, they do a good job of making it sort of represent the unique art style of the artist, whose name I always forget. Uh, they also worked on Nier Automata and, uh, you know, the other Final Fantasy games there, 12 and all them, uh, who is known for big thighs and no noses. Right. A deadly combination. Krillin excels at being such a character design. Mm -hmm. Krillin, known for his massive thighs. Oh yeah, you know. You know, he is the strongest human on Earth. Okay, so this is just like anime whales, I guess. Yeah, so this is our main character, Tiz. He's, uh, generic. Yeah, very. Oh my god. Is this God's Wrath coming to purge the vanilla characters? This is actually the beam that destroys all their noses. Ah, okay. Seems a little bit overkill. Just take him to a plastic surgeon. Well, about that. Uh... So I guess you could say, Till death to they part. Hey -oh. <laughs> Cause his brother's name is Till. I guess he's in a bit of a tizzy now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do you need to Chernobyl the place? Okay, so it's a smidge more than Chernobyl, I think. That's lava is coming out of the ground in 1999, is what that is. On the precipice of despair. That's the intro, by the way. <laughs> I would like to just voice all title cards in video games. Chapter 5. This one, filled with side quests. But is he okay? Oh, yep, he's lying on a bed. Not a hospital bed. That's a good sign. And not under the bed. Not under the covers. Because that would mean that you're not standing on top of a pre-painted background. What do I look like? A deadly premonition dev? I can't get in there and make him get under those sweet, sumptuous covers. I had to pick a game at random. I'm not sure if deadly premonition was the one with <laughs> quilt tech, okay? Quilt tech is, is, is incredible whenever I see it, because I'm so used to protagonists just lying right on top of their beds. Oh yeah, it happens even recently, honestly. Cloud sleeps right on top of his bed in the remake, in full armor. He doesn't take it off. Well, that's just Cloud, really. He's like, whatever, and just lies on top. Your village is gone. A great chasm opened in the earth, and... All of Narende was swallowed up in darkness. Fully voiced cutscenes, very nice. Yeah, there's a there's there. a lot of voice acting for this. They really went hard on the voice I acting, presentation right wise. Um, well, it's very clearly Can going for like a they you know a slightly nicer now. PS1 art style. You know, pre-rendered backgrounds, chibi character models. Uh, the actual presentation they worked hard on the audio a lot, so you get really high quality music. Like I'm talking, this music is some of the best on the. 3DS. Uh, so much so, when the composer didn't come back for Bravely Second, people threw a fit and they regarded the game as a failure. Well, I mean, you make a game like Bravely Second, and then you make a game called Bravely Default 2. I think that says a lot. Yeah, so it's confusing, because Bravely Second is a direct sequel to this, but Bravely Default 2 is like Final Fantasy 2, where it's similar ideas, but a whole different, you know, world and characters and everything. So, kind of going for, you know, again, the Final Fantasy anthology type thing. Lovely. Just lovely. It's like a more 3D-ish map painting. And it's a good thing, you know, we went to uh, the isle, the Land of Beginnings, and we didn't go to the Land of Brutal Hell Death. Yeah, yeah, I went there once. I wouldn't recommend it. Oh, very familiar Final Fantasy character here. 
Yeah, so this is the adventurer. He was the save point and merchant for Final Fantasy for Warriors of Light. He's back here because this game is, again, it's for all intents and purposes, like a sequel to that. Uh, and because it's the same team. They basically said when Four Warriors of Light sold really well and people really liked it, uh, it too featured pretty much the same boost system that's in this and then uh, Octopath, which itself is like another spiritual sequel to Bravely Default a bit. There you go. Uh, though it's a bit different and they go going back now, um, you know, to Bravely Default because there, there are differences here. Um, it's interesting how they kind of went like, okay, we're now going off of Bravely Default to Octopath. Now, like, okay, no, no, we're going back to Bravely Default. <laughs> yeah, let's just get back in that comfort zone while we still can. What a large, jolly king. Yes. In this land, only people who resemble Santa Claus may be king. One comes along every 50 years. Uh, otherwise, it's a regular democracy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't want all of that when you try to deliver Christmas presents, you know? But time may stay and rest all you need. What a nice king. This is a very small town. I'm sure the kingdom's bigger, though. Yeah, it's, it's you know, normally you play these games and the king is corrupt usually. But the first one, no, this guy's kind of nice. I mean, it's kind of a reference to the original Final Fantasy 1, where the first thing you do is you go up to the king and he's like, hey, you guys are cool. Can you save my daughter? And you're like, cool. And then you do that and he's like, awesome. Now you're free to explore the world. And then near the end, Garland's like, I'll knock you down. That's the summation of FF1 in my mind. Actually, Garland says I'll knock you down right at the beginning, and then at the end is when he really tries to knock you down. Okay. These cursed knights of the Eternian sky are riddling my kingdom with cannonball. I, I would pay for cannonball protection, but God, I need those mince pies. You have no idea. Do be careful, child. And know that you have a place here when you return. If you return. Sorry. Have to include that, otherwise the lawyers will be up my ass, you know. <laughs> so we do have free access to roam around now and explore the town. There's actually a lot of different shops you can go visit. I think uh, we might even have a bit of starting money, so to expedite our journey, we can even go maybe get a, a weapon or two. Hmm, let's have a look. Ooh, a broadsword, you say? Ooh, that'd be better than our little starting paltry knife. Uh, yes, I will take one broadsword, thank you very much. That attack up only goes by one, but you know what? Hey, going up by one is still good. Uh, should I get a buckler? I don't think you have enough money, unless you maybe sell something in your inventory that you might have. Oh, why don't you equip the broadsword, sell your dagger? I saw the equip uh, thing on the menu that I just clicked off to first. Oh, there you go. Oh, I think you have your dagger still in your hand. See, your equip is your left column, your broadsword there is in your second. There you go. Yeah. Big swords for big boys. I am a big boy. And now we sell this, and we get ourselves a buckler. And we're laughing. Just straight laughing. 25? Yes, perfect. That'll give us the exact right amount. Uh, da da da. Nice. Now, we didn't actually have this last time, so combat actually should go quicker. You know, it's been years, and I mean years, since this has become normal in games, but every time I play a game and I see you change your equipment and your character changes how they look, I go, wow, video games are amazing now. Well, I mean, it's just that kind of visual feedback that shows your character growing along the course of the story, you know? Yeah. Yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. Okay, yeah, the key to that growth lies in jobs and abilities. Jobs, a very Final Fantasy thing. Mm-hmm. Again, right from Final Fantasy V. Uh, the cool thing about jobs in this game is, well, in any game that features them, is the whole thing is you get a job, you master the job, and then you can take the skills you learn at that job and put them into other jobs. So, say you max out being a black mage. You can then take your black mage skills and give them to a monk who fights with hand-to-hand -hand combat. So now you can use black magic spells as a monk who fights hand-to-hand. -hand. There you go. In fact, 
then you can master your stuff for that and then give it to the freelancer class, which you are right now, and you can then use that to mix and match. So you really have many options for uh, customizing your characters as you like, and that's why Final Fantasy V is my favorite, because every playthrough you do can be entirely different. Mm -hmm. Right, you explained this last time, I'll take this turn. Braving and defaulting. Brave is where you essentially store up turns, and yes, you can go below zero into the minus column, although that'll kind of fuck you out of turns later on, so be very careful. And default is when you use multiple of those turns. So you are right, except you got the names reversed. Default lets you save up the terms. Brave is where you do multiple. I'm sorry. I tried. I had one shot and I failed. No, it's fine. It's fine. You got it. You got it right. You just got the names backwards. And the good news is defaulting also increases your defense. So it's sort of like by defending, you get another turn next time. Okay. Aim for just one goblin. Nice. I think because it's a tutorial, you don't have your special weapons that we got out here because, uh, yeah, you're just using your dagger, but we do have them equipped. <laughs> well, I sold that dagger. I shouldn't even have it on me. It's okay. We're in the tutorial dimension. Uh, right. Now it's time to use the thing that Tana said that I said wrong. I'm defaulted. Defense up and you gain, uh, well, what it is is you don't gain a BP, it's just you don't use it because you always get one each turn. So yeah, there we go. That's the basics of the system. Just take what I said, reverse it, and you'll be sad as a pound, mate. So the nice thing is, uh, if you really feel like you are gonna, like, destroy the battle, you can just go brave, 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 and just wipe out the enemies. Like, we have one goblin here. We could default to get our turns up, or we can just brave a bunch of times, because we know we'll kill him quickly, and just go ham on him. Done. And like that, we've saved our, you know, HP... And we actually get bonuses for defeating him in one turn. You get bonus experience and AP. There you go. I believe there is a treasure chest around here somewhere. Ah, there's a couple different ones around here. This is a dead end. You've, you've lied to me, RPG. I think you're thinking about on the next screen. Maybe. Maybe Tanner is right. And there's its twin across the ravine. Now, we, had, we enter the cave. Uh, as far as I'm aware, a ravine is something outside. Yeah, so I think there is, like, you know, a little bit of sunlight coming in, but it's a bit difficult to see, you know. it's it's yeah, You can see a bit of sunlight on the top screen there. Mm, right. Let's give these nasty boys a bit each. Just spread it out. Now, the nice thing is, if your attack does kill an enemy there, uh, it will move on to the next target, which is quite nice, you know, so that you don't have to worry about the, uh, you know, missing, because I hate that in old-school RPGs. So, as you can see, uh, the goblin will now get three turns, as we need to um, get back our BP there. Done. Thankfully, their arrows were piss-easy baby arrows from the town of not doing much damage here. Goblins not known for their uh, for their oh dang just just not enough but they're Ugh. not known for their strength at all. Not really no. All right, let's back up and go around. So this game has a lot of really cool features that make uh, just in general playing a lot nicer. So for example, if you'd like, you can turn off encounters. In the options, you just go there and you're like, I don't want any more encounters. And then you can, you know, easily escape a dungeon without worrying about it. You can also not only increase the encounter rate if you're like, no, I want me, I'm grinding, I want more encounters. You can even uh, turn on the, um, turn up the enemy difficulty and you'll get bonus experience because you're fighting tougher enemies. There you go. I was denied a level up last time. Now I have it with gusto. Mm-hmm. You're big stronger now. Ugh. Level two. Impress all the ladies. I'm trying to, man. God sweet Mike, have I been trying to. Ooh, nice. We got 200 platinum games. <laughs> man, I don't think there's that many out there right now. I know. It's kind of only like one of them. Maybe <laughs> another one that's, you know, you're copying the name, but... Top three platinum games games, mate. 
Ooh. Um, I gotta say Bayonetta's number one, for sure. I think it's still, like, their best, even, you know, beyond two. Um, oh, but I guess for the others, that's a toughie. I haven't actually played through Rising myself. I need to do that. Um, not that it'll take very long. Mm -hmm. Um, I only played about half a Transformers. That's another one I gotta go through. Can I say Okami? That's Clover Studios. I'll let you have that. Yeah, because I think for me that's one that, um... I just loved the fact that it was a long Platinum game because one of the problems that I have with them is they're quite short. Um, and so by going into the, you know, going fully in, you get a lot more depth. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoyed from what I played of Astral Chain. I just need to finish it. I think I'm on like chapter eight or so. Well, better do it fast, mate, because we have a playthrough of you, me, and Richie coming up. Yep, yep, yep. As for me, I'd probably say Astral Chain... Bayonetta, currently, and uh, Transformers Devastation. Yeah, I, I I got Transformers when it was a free PSN game, but I didn't it didn't fully go into it. Huh. Very old date. It's another gameplay tool for the use of with the 3DS. Ah, okay, Strange Hourglass. What does it do? Break from turn-based combat conventions anytime and act anytime. Do it anytime. I frozen time and moved past it. So you can literally at any time press the start button and say, no, shut up, it's my turn now. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could be in the middle of enemies attacking, you could be in the middle of uh, a character doing a long summon animation, and you can say, no, shut up, it's my turn now. <laughs> Though it does use your 3DS's sleep mode to power up, uh, or you can feed it play coins. Remember play coins? I think I got like five of those max. Then again, there wasn't really much room to do a marathon around my house. By god, they killed it. And the sheep too, they're gone. Must smell like wonderful cooked sheep though. I I I'm glad you're hearing me doing this. You, you see the upside, the, the silver lining to everything. <laughs> everything died, but man, can you smell those lamb burgers? Seriously, mm. yeah. And you know, once the rivers finish filling up this uh, giant circular crater, we're going to have the best pool party ever. Oh man, you got your own mini ocean? That's awesome. Let me be strong enough to stem this flood. Well, I think it's going to be a while before the flood kicks in later. So we are introduced to arguably the actual main character, Agnès Obligé. You speaking French to me now, Tano? Yeah, well, her name has an accent in there. I thought as a Canadian, you were forbidden to use the secret language. What are you talking about? It's literally we, we are forced to learn it in school because we are half French. Oh, I see. Sorry, that's my upbringing as a Brit coming out, though. We have two dads. One that's French and one that's British. Huh. Your plight, it speaks to me, but it doesn't interest me. Um, I'll give you a like on Twitter, I guess. Maybe a follow. Maybe. I'll put you into one of my lists of interesting people that I make a list for, but I don't follow. Yeah, then I'll drop you in a blockchain. Jesus Christ. We got the quirky mini-bosses. So unlike uh, Final Fantasy V, where uh, you get the jobs by finding the crystals, the crystal breaks, you use the shards of power to get your jobs. In this one, you literally, every time you find a quirky mini-boss who represents a Final Fantasy job, you beat them down and steal their jobs. Okay, so we got a, a pursuit now, perhaps. Probably gonna have to get away from here, lickety-split. 
yeah, the Sky Knights of the Attorney and Capital are not very nice. They kind of want to take everything over. You know, the usual RPG Empire stuff. Ah, oh, of course. And the uh, guitar for this theme is going ham right now. Oh man, uh, the there is a boss battle theme in this game that you need to listen to after we get to after we finish this because we won't get to it in this part. Um, where they go so ham with the anime violins, like I'm talking, it goes for violins what Dynasty Warriors does for guitars, oh. and it is. So Oh, good. Gosh, diggity damn. The guy who uh, who worked on it, his name is Revo, and uh, he has an album called Linked Horizons, and it's like, it has the best album cover ever of, like, him in, like, a PS1 CGI hell just riffing on a guitar in <laughs> sunglasses. It's the best. Braving and defaulting. Don't get those two mixed up like that one guy. Listen to yourself in a froth over a little girl. I am a woman. You are a man. This is the summation of our characters. Uh, pretty much, yeah. The the side characters they range in personality from generic sort of villain to actual psychopath and criminals um there's one infamous side quest involving child kidnapping and slave trading and possibly thinly veiled sexual abuse it's pretty rough there's some rough moments in this game uh, there's actually was a couple things that were so spicy they needed to change it for the english version where they're like ah, it's a bit much for the kiddos who got the 3ds's so we're gonna just slightly write it a bit differently yeah. uh, which is honestly fair because they go a bit darker than the average final fantasy game not in terms of you know in terms of violence but in terms of just subject matter Right, so we're just gonna brave, 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 and kick the shit out of him. Mm-hmm. This Sky Dueler. Who are the generic grunts of, uh, of these, uh, Sky Knights? As a freelancer, you actually do start with a, uh, a power. Uh, under the abilities there, which is just a simple analysis. You get to look at the enemy and they'll say like, oh yeah, you you are, you know, you have so much HP, you're probably weak to fire. It's nothing amazing, but it is good for, you know, when you're battling a boss and you're like, okay, what is your actual elemental weakness? Mm -hmm. Kind of like scan or tattle in that regard. Yeah, I think you, there is actually a proper scan ability later on, uh, but this is just the basic one. I think this actually levels up into... Uh, scan as you as you improve your uh, freelancer class. Okay. I took one step, by the way. One step. You both are gonna get it really bad now. That's it. Welcome to uh, welcome to uh, the JRPGs with the random encounters. How do you feel about random encounters? I prefer them to be on the overworld, honestly. I think that's fair. I think this game with its uh, you can turn them off if you need to is is a uh, is a fine way to balance it because they really want to keep the classic Final Fantasy sort of stuff going because Lord knows the modern Final Fantasy games aren't like this. Yeah, very much so. How does it balance like if you turn that off? How does it balance you gaining levels though? Oh, it doesn't. It's just there for if you're like, oh no, I am at a good level and I just want to get to where I need to go. Huh. Okay. In that regard, it's more competitive than casual in terms of implementation. Uh, yeah, I could see that. There's actually, like, a lot, like, uh, there's, you basically unlock this feature as you continue, like, into the first chapter, where it's, like, you're given about 40 different, like, gauges, and it's, like, how many encounters do you want to battle, uh, normally? How fast do you want to run? How fast do the battles want to be? And you can, like, adjust them all to, like, fit your liking. That's one. Not again. Is that going to be a second? Nope, not yet. These guys are like, I may have the same amount of HP as my other partner, but this time I got it. <laughs> yeah. Alright, now one for Agnes. Lots for Agnes. So 
So that, that is the nice thing. I think also, um, if you press left or right with the D-pad, you can actually speed up the combat too. So you can actually go like, you know, if you really want to, make it go quite fast. Um, and as you level up, your character's uh, speed increases, which will determine how many strikes they do in a single turn. Ah. Which is fun because, you know, as your speed increases and the enemy speed is lower, uh, eventually you'll start to do stuff where it's like, you know, four strikes per attack. Which if you do four brave attacks, meaning you do 16. And you can do up to, in a single turn, about 16 attacks. Oh. Meaning you can do about 64 hits per time. And it's like, ooh, and just seeing them go ham is the best. Oh. Hmm. Isn't that always the way when you're all passion and no finish? So this fellow on the, uh, on the left here is a monk, which is less of the religious kind and more of the, you know, bare-fisted fighter type. Hey. Monks in general are known for the fact that if you don't equip them with weapons, uh, they will do many ora 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 punches as their attacks just right off the get go. Yes. Uh, which is good for the early game because you can, you know, punch with a monk and just see like, you know, eight hits and you're like, ooh, that feels good. I'm so basic. Just give me an aura rush on there. Yeah, it's like if your game doesn't have it, why bother? Okay, just focus on one at a time, I guess. So there is uh, some more features in battle that we will get introduced to, uh, but there is a lot of connectivity with both the Wi-Fi as well as the local street pass sort of stuff. Uh, so there was a lot of, um, there was a big community for this game when it, when it first came out there, I remember, because I played it on release, uh, where there was almost like raid battles. So you and your friends could like team up and um, do battles together, not necessarily in real time, but more in more like asynchronous. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was there was a lot of different connecting stuff. It, it's it's a cool way of sort of modernizing, you know, the uh, the, um, the this game. Nice. As you can see, though, uh, the depth really starts to come in as you increase the number of things you can do in combat, so you used a potion and also attacked. Uh, later on, as you get more jobs, you'll be able to, say, for instance, in a single turn, buff an ally, you know, four times for their attack, and then have them do a bunch of strong attacks, because you buff them four times, and then have them attack four times themselves. <laughs> so there's a lot of really good, like, you know, strategy involving that. Like our airship? You're the only one who can steer this boat, dumb ox. Why don't you take a course, learn how to fly the thing, and then maybe I will get to have a break every once in a while then. Uh, she, she has a medical condition. They say she can't get it. Yeah, fires are too fake. The enemy just hears a comment every time. Mm -hmm. Clap a clap a clap. Also, her name is Holly White. Get it? Because she's a white mage. Oh, oh. Uh. The death of comedy lives within my heart right now. I think there's a joke for Bara Slay also. I think Bara meaning like muscle man in Japanese. I think that's the joke. Yeah, maybe. So, if you've ever played Tales of Vesperia, you may be, uh, well, you know what a skit is, I suppose. I don't know where I was going with that. But let's have a little chat with uh, Agnes or whatever her name was. Yeah, so there's, you know, little uh, little sequences that you can fully skip over if you're the type to just be like, no, I don't care, I want to play my RPG quickly. But if you're the type that's, you know, more in for the story and wants those sweet, sweet character interactions, you can have them chat to each other. Yeah, what with the cannonballs raining hellfire and such and so on. And the sound of thighs rubbing. Again, they clap and it distracts me. From the combat, obviously. Well, we best end the quick look before they return, then. Ha! <laughs> well, I guess that sells it, then. Yeah. There is nothing worse than saying goodbye to someone, 
that you see, you know, you're, you're out and about, you see them, you're like, oh, hey, how's it going? And then you say goodbye, and then you both walk the same direction, and oh. you're like, oh, God, oh, God, what do I do? And then you, like, try and go somewhere else, and then you meet up with them again later, and it's like, oh, God, I want to die. Right. I've been outside for many a year, uh, personal reasons. Is that a fucking Pokemon? Anyway, what, what was I saying? Yeah, I know that feel. That feel when. It's Airy the Fairy! Tada. What? That's her name. Okay, I'm just- I'm trying to cope right now. This is a cope in real time. It's okay. Just don't be distracted by the massive size of her thighs. I, I'm probably gonna need a magnifying glass at this point. I mean, they are on the bottom screen at all times. Oh, you're not wrong. Hell yeah. I know about these crystals across the Final Fantasy franchise, and also in terms of the second half of this game. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so there is, um, this game is definitely has a stronger first half than the second half, it should be known. Um, it's not world ending, it's not like game ruining, but it is a bit of a thing where it's like you, it's a little front loaded in the first half. I think that is addressed in the second game, though. They don't pull it again. That's good. Well, at least they learned from it. Energy in the world. Our lands, our seas, and all that inhabit them exist through the crystal's bounty. The power of the Chaos Emeralds. No wonder Obama wants them. Yeah, basically, crystals are good, but they also like, they're like air filters, you know, they suck up the bad stuff. So, you know, every now and then you got to get someone in to fix them, to clean them. So, Agnes here is, a, she's an air filter person, you know, comes on in, fixes them up, absorbs the darkness into herself. Probably not the best thing, but hey, it is what it is. Wait, did Obama want the Chaos Emeralds or did he have them? Because the way he chuckled, it made it sound like they were in his possession. Um... I think he already had them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm serious about meme lore, right? Oh yeah, well it's it's that's that's the lore that matters. And so she went, taking her Pokemon with her. Hey, wait a minute. What am I gonna put in this patch? She can live in here. Ooh, another party chat. <laughs> She's here as well, don't mind me. Yeah, she's she sticks around for the majority of the story. She's kind of a she's the quirky, fun one. Again, the Morgana, the sort of you know the the comedy relief. Not quite Midna then. No, definitely not Midna. Right time, right place. Is she Miracle Man? I bet my wings on it. It's not 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 what she sounds like at all. But that's all right. <laughs> this is why I don't do voice acting for stuff. Although maybe we will for certain games down the line. Yeah. So uh, Aerie is voiced though by uh, Stephanie Se, uh, best known as um, uh, what's her face, the one Fire Emblem chick that's really hot. You're gonna have to be more specific, mate. Atharja. Oh, her. I see. In general, this game does have a really good voice cast. Um, the Tiz is voiced by Vi uh, Bryce Pappenbrook. Uh, Agnes is voiced by Aaron Fitzgerald. Uh, all the all the the go tos, you know. There's there's a Liam O'Brien or two thrown in here. Uh, why not? All right, you want a bit more? I got a bit more to give you. Yeah, just delicious experience points come running up to us. That theme I mentioned is pretty kicking. In general, like everything from this team does, be it this game, Bravely Second, um, Octopath, they really make sure that that music is like, it's part of the experience, right? Well, they go for, you know, the retro style with the graphics and the, the combat. No, no, no. They go peak you for the audio. You make it. Do you mean to say... You'll repair that giant hole? You're gonna need so much to do what only I am able. Purify the crystals and release them from the darkness. I noticed you didn't answer my question there. That's a lot of real estate I'm gonna have to futz with. Mm-hmm. And futz you will in the town building minigame. Vestals have been pouring their prayers into the crystals. 
Well, go on. I'm on Tenterox over here. Oh yeah. So there is, uh, there is a. While you explore the world, uh, you can on the bottom screen basically do a sort of mobile game style town building where you kind of send people to make houses and that brings in people and you can say, well, I want to upgrade the shop. And then as you upgrade the shop, it takes time. And so you get your own, like you rebuild that town as a mini game. And uh, you can get monsters that invade it, which you can uh, attack and get as summons. So it's pretty cool. It's a fun little bottom screen distraction. Kind of reminds me one of Colony 6 from the original Xenoblade. I can't wait for the definitive edition of that at the end of May. Oh boy. Also, the building system from Dark Cloud 2, or Dark Chronicle, as it's known here in Europe. It's not so much, like, you don't get to kind of place things kind of customization style. It's more, there's, like, just an empty lot, and you click it and say what you want in it. Uh, but it is a really fun system for um, kind of having a town wherever you want, because you can kind of uh, go to it wherever. You don't have to physically go there. Why? Please. I shall see you back to the city, and there our paths will part. Ha! Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, ignore the fact that I'm on the front cover of the game. Oh, another party chat, Jesus. I think I skipped these last time. Uh, you definitely skipped two. I think we did the first one and this one, and that was about it. It should be said, last time uh, with you not having the, um, the broadsword and also going full default and then braving, uh, it took a bit more time, but that was, you know, learning the systems. You know what's funny? Actually... We've taken longer now, as opposed to before. Oh, you are right now that I look at it. That's because we went into the shop. So those little things that add up, so if you're going to be a speedrunner, take that into account. Kill the animals. Save the animals. Alright, I guess that's where we, I guess that's where we part ways. <sighs> I guess you're east side, I'm west side. Just see a video go up. Oh, to Tanner on Hellfire comms. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't left. I just fucking killed him. <laughs> uh, it's like I am Pokemon Red. You're Pokemon Blue. Um, Flame is over there being weird as Pokemon Yellow. It's just a whole trifecta of uncomfortableness, really. Okay, well, thanks, Tiz. Thank you for your input. Why do we even do these party chats? Tiz very rarely offers an actual opinion. He's just along for the ride. He's the isekai main character that everyone loves and just kind of exists. I guess, yeah. Oh, we're gonna stop here. Oh, are you really? Let's see about that. He shows basic kindness and that makes the girls go, Wow, you treat me like no other person on this world. Yeah, I'm fucking soaked over here, mate. Jesus. Yeah, now you're getting the two hits in. Booyah! Oh, so close to leveling up my freelancer. So yeah, uh, freelancer is especially one of the better jobs. Uh, for one, it's the one that gives people their default outfit, uh, which is nice, because, you know, like, Agnes has this nice little overcoat here. Uh, but also, it's as you level up your other jobs, it powers up freelancer stats too, so it's like, you can kind of cash him out as going back to freelancer. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a me joke there, Tears, in terms of Tears. Yeah, he's not the funniest man or the most handsome. He's kind of average across the board, period. Yeah, this miraculous accessory lets you communicate with other players. Uh -huh, register other players. Well, I don't have any friends, so this is going to be a wasted feature. Yeah, so basically what you can do is uh, you can set a character to do an attack and then send them off to the internet and they can be picked up by either your friends or through strangers online or through street pass there and you can then press the summon friend button and they will come in and do something so say for instance you you know you have your character uh, cast a heal all spell 
then you'll be able to send that off as a thing to do, and then the next time that someone, you know, wants to summon you, you'll come in and do it. So, uh, it's sort of like a, a one-shot um, ability that you can send off to people to use, and when you use it, it's, you know, a move that then they can use. It's an interesting feature, but it's one that becomes extremely obsolete once the Wi-Fi system gets shut down. Yeah, uh, in general, there was a lot of stuff for this game that was like, yeah, it's like Street Pass. Well, no one's carrying their 3DS arounds anymore, especially no one that had, you know, <laughs> Bravely Default. So you don't really get to use that there, but uh, it, it was cool at the time for sure. So this is all the stuff here. You got stuff there, you got your magic, and you got your fairy on the bottom or whatnot, with the Come Hither sign saying, Are you going to go see the king? Perhaps he knows the way across the sea. So, folks, that was the first 45 minutes or so, basically the intro of Bravely Default. Here's everyone who's currently pledged. I hope you've been able to tell through this rather frantic and sort of obnoxious uh, quick look just how this freshens up the uh, turn-based RPG genre a little bit with the ability to store turns and unleash them on the enemy, stuff like that, being able to skip random encounters and so on. And um, it, it was fun what I played. Um, I'm not sure if I would go back to it because I'm more of an action RPG sort of guy. So when I'm saying this stuff, just keep that in mind because I know where my priorities lie. What about you, Tanner? Yeah, no, I, I do enjoy me a good turn-based JRPG, and this is kind of like a comfort food type game because uh, you can replay it, uh, you know, start over from kind of the beginning and be like, okay, I'm going to do a playthrough where everyone's going to be monks, right? Or you can do it as like, you know, this time I'm going to make Agnes be a physical fighter, or I'm going to make, you know, Tiz only do time magic, right? So it is a fun sort of thing to, uh, once you go on, you know, skip the story and just go back in, and that's why I love Final Fantasy V. It's a lot of customization, a lot of replay with brand new stuff. Really fun. Right, so thank you, Loki Vex, for commissioning this. If you guys want your own uh, Patreon TV com or Quick Look, I always say like the opposite thing. In like when I'm doing a TV com, I say Quick Look. When I'm doing a Quick Look, I say TV com. No wonder I got Brave and Default mixed up. Jesus Christ. But if you want your own Aviva or even a movie com, go to patreon.com forward slash hellfire coms and you can help support the group and get something in return. So maybe pledge today and keep us going because Lord knows I got fuck all else to do in this bitch of a world. We'll see you next time for another HFC Patreon Quick Look. Bye bye.